on this episode, the forbidden mathematics. 1 plus 15 is 0? And of course, we use this cursed knowledge for... Just your regular time travel stuff. And I was worried we will just make the computer crash like an idiot. Oh! <laughs> Mm, hi everybody, hi everybody, this is Christian, this is Lazy Devs Academy. This is episode 52 of the Advanced Map Tutorial. And so by the end of this episode, this will become my longest tutorial series yet. And that's not even counting the basic tutorial that we did in front of it. Man, making awesome games takes a lot of time. You can make a game quick or you can make it good. So today we are going to um, do a bunch of stuff. We are going to um, go through, a, I've collected a bunch of little tweaks and fixes over the time that people suggested on different media or I, I noticed. Uh, so we're gonna jump into that. And then when we do the, the kind of housekeeping stuff, then we're gonna move on to making metadata for our brain editor. Uh, but yeah, let's get started with the little stuff. All right, so we're gonna go load Cow shmup. And then off the bat, the first thing I want to fix is that um, oh, in the particles, when you go in the particles, you see how we still have X scroll in the particles. And that kind of makes not much more, not like it doesn't make much sense anymore because we kind of already have that. Like we are using now this weird other system, so we actually don't need this anymore. Uh, what we can do instead is using the, the new object that we created for the player. And I, you have to apologize, uh, PSPR, <laughs> it's PSPR, right? Um, I haven't been coding in like three months. Uh, no, not three months, three weeks. So <laughs> I might be a bit rusty on some of the things here. Uh, but yeah, let's just replace this with PSPR X and Y. And I think, I think that would just be the same thing, yeah. Um, so I think the yeah, the sprite, uh, the, um, the the muzzle flashes are using the uh, the sprite function here. The um, there are particles that are sprites, so they're using the sprite function. And this p lock was an ability to, uh, or this feature that locked a particle to the position of the player, so we can attach things to a player. Um, and we use the x scroll in there, but we don't have to do it anymore. Um, by the way, this could be also py. It just saves a little bit of a, a bit of a token Rooney there. Okay, small fix here. Uh, later we might actually expand this feature so we can lock um, particles to different objects. So we can maybe have an, a particle that is locked to an enemy object actually. Um, but not today. We don't need it right now. So just like something that we keep in mind. Next up, um, I have a comment from the G0124. The G0124. Uh, on episode 35 and they talked a little bit about the split function after split to D function We did a bit of a tweak to the split to D function and um, there was some criticism uh, by the the G the the, the the G yeah, the G one zero one two four um, it, it should have Where's the three one two four? Where's the three? It should be is this G one two three would be really good. Oh, man <laughs> um, Anyways, split to D. So we use this I next iterator. And to be honest, like this was somebody um, else suggested this. And to be honest, I'm not really that happy with the, that iterator um, because I don't quite understand it. I would have to look it up, and do research. It's kind of like some kind of like deep, deep Lua lore that, that we have to get into. Um, the G123, <laughs> 124, <laughs> 0, 1, 2, 4, suggested. Um, Slightly different approach here, which I I don't don't hate. Uh, it's it could be good. Um, let's let's try that. So this is the code that he sen sent me. This is the, his split to D function. Um, slightly different approach, and uses some uh, loops that I uh, consciously didn't use. But now I might be like, eh, it might be not a bad idea. So this is 26 tokens. Our old code was 27 tokens. Saves us one token even over the upgraded version. Ooh! Um, I want to discuss a little bit why I didn't use the... Because he's using the for v in all function, whereas I used the uh, uh, pairs function. Um, and um, the for v in all is just like slightly to more token uh, efficient. 
Um, the reason why I didn't use it uh, in the past is that, well, I've been taught that the 4V in all doesn't guarantee order. So, like, it's not necessarily, like, if you have an array, it won't necessarily go through, you know, one, two, three, four, five, like, through the entries, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, it doesn't necessarily go in order. It might do things out of order. I did some research into this, and the cases where it doesn't do out of order are kind of insane cases that we probably never get when we're using the split function anyway. Uh, not insane, but kind of, like, weird cases where you maybe build the array in a weird way. Um, and maybe there's like gaps in the array or maybe, you know, weird, weird kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, with weird arrays, it might not be guaranteed, like the order might be not predictable entirely. But um, in this case, the array that we are uh, iterating through is kind of like the array created by the split function. And that's kind of like a very standard array. So we can, we can use the for v in all function here and we should be fine. I did some tests and it was fine. Um, so let me replace this. Yeah, and it's fine. I'm gonna delete this old split 2D function. I'm gonna probably start using this function now. It's kind of like uses things that I'm familiar with that I'm kind of like confident using and all of my fears or my uh, concerns were kind of unfounded. So this is nice. By the way, we could also probably get rid of the false here. Um, so the false um, is basically this um, false is third parameter on a split function. If that's set to true, then if um, you know the resulting string that you extract, like if it separates a string into smaller strings, and if one of the strings turns out to be a number, it automatically converts that to a number. I specifically stated false there to in order for the, uh, you know, the little things that it splits into. I want them absolutely to be strings because I'm doing another split function on top of that. So I wouldn't didn't want to have a situation where it accidentally runs a split function on a number um, but again I don't think that will actually happen uh, let's try that yeah it's, it just works it, it's just like it's just the same thing right it, there is no no problem with that so um, so yeah another little bit of a token save there it was like and sometimes I write things a little bit too robust based on my like internal fears of like oh, to, to cover all of the cases but uh, you know, they're not always completely found it. And it's good if people point this out. Another thing is from Progress Stick uh, 2960. Why, what's with the name and numbers? Um, okay, Progress Stick um, suggested that the uh, segment garbage collection could be um, simplified. So uh, segment garbage collection is when here, uh, it's kind of has to do with the scrolling, right? When you have segments and then eventually when, it's, when you scroll past the segments, you want to get rid of all the old segments. And um, uh, Progress Stick suggested that um, we could, uh, this here, this part here where we delete old segments, this could be so much easier because right now it's like this, ooh, you know, very complicated thing. But actually we could just like um, probably go, go get away with, with a much sim simpler solution. So this is like 15 tokens, but we could also just go like if hashtag cur segs is greater than three, then uh, that's that, that's that's enough, and that's six tokens. We don't have to have like very precise. Um, I, I'm not sure if it even even works, but let's, let's see if this works. Do we have some? Oh, we've had some. Okay, the, <laughs> the the enemies that appear they they spawn weirdly, but that's fine. Uh, I just want to see if we're gonna see some scrolling. I mean, yeah, we're gonna see some um, some landscape scrolling underneath. Yeah, it seems to be working fine. Uh, maybe we should. Um, Print the number of well, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. It, we had like this weird, like, oh yeah, if you know, we only delete them if you scroll past them, but I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, something that we should test is if we can, um, if we can start on a different scroll value. Uh, so let's 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 start at scroll there value one hundred. Let's start at two hundred. And yeah, it's fine. It's all good. All right, turning it back to zero and then moving on. Um, uh, Proxy also said that maybe it's worth making a local variable to store the curse X because we use it five times now. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I looked into it. I don't think like this thing, right? Because it's two tokens, right? And if you remove the hashtag, it's just one token. So it might be worth, you know, doing a local variable. Um, I, I don't think that's that you can, we can pull this off. Um, because once you add, for example, a, um, a, a segment to the array, then the number actually changes. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's three tokens and what, what, what is a local, local, local C seg equals hashtag cursex. Yeah, so that's four tokens. So like you would have to use it five times in order to, for for to, to justify this. I don't think that's 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 a that's that's that's, that's over the top, man. But the other suggestion was I think pretty good. The Gacko uh, suggested something that is actually really nice, uh, and that is you. We can uh, we we are always drawing like because we have two jets, we have two bullets, we have two muzzle flashes. So in, in most of the times we can simplify things a little bit. Uh, or use a loop to draw them. And I think that's a good idea. I actually wanted to do this with muzzle flashes and bullets. I just never got to it. And um, But the Gakko also suggested this because you know each one of, the, one of those lines, that's like 10 tokens. That's a heavy line, right? So if we can make this line a little bit easier, then I think we are, um, yeah, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be nice, right? So let's do something for i equals um, minus one to, to uh, two. Uh, comma uh, three do <laughs> right something like this we have like a weird uh, if uh, for next loop and then this and because this is like you know seven tokens plus this one token here oh that's actually not even a token that's good um so yeah and then we can just be like you know i like this let's try that uh, not quite what we we'll, what, what what we want. Not, not oh, it should be plus i. Yeah, there we go. See, it's good. It's good. So this is seventeen tokens, and previously it was ten tokens. So we kind of save saved three tokens. Kind of like a little nice improvement. Um, but we can also do the same thing with um, shooting. So. And this is actually going to be significant. That's, again, I wanted to do that before, but I just never got to it. So you see how we have like one shot, and then we have another shot. And this is just like, you know, 42 tokens that we just always repeat. Come on, right? So we can do like four, um, let me see. The, it's four and uh, minus four and plus four. So let's go for i equals, um, but wait, what about the, what about this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So for i equals four to uh, minus four to four, uh, comma eight. Do <laughs> it's a really really weird loop. And then we're gonna um, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, shoot the shot in this loop, and then this is gonna be plus i, right? So we're just repeating this twice because this loop is going from minus four to four, and the third entry in the loop is kind of like the step that you do on every loop. So you go minus four on the first loop, then you add eight on the second loop and, and that will result in four and that will give you, so we go twice with this loop, once with minus four and once with four. Um, yeah, and then you can just like remove this shot, right? And then we can also add the, the muzzle flashes in here as well. It's the same thing, it's the same thing. It's kind of nice that we're using the same loop for the muzzle flashes and for the uh, for the the actual bullets. Bam! See, let's try that. Works the same. Works the same. Same code, just like saved a whole bunch of tokens. It's like a hundred tokens that we saved, or something like this. It's significant. This was a big deal. Thank you so much, the Gecko. Now the next one is going to be actually a bit uh, scary. There is something that the progress stick 2966 suggested or found out, which is scary, which is if you press all of the movement buttons at the same time, the game crashes. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. I don't know, I find it funny that you can make the game crash by pressing a button. <laughs> it's too easy. Oh, wait, it's, you're pressing four buttons. Okay, there's too many buttons. 
Um, yeah, what happens there? What the heck happens there? <laughs> we, it, this buck has been sitting there for a long time, for 50 episodes, this buck has been sitting around. Man, progress stick, I love you. Yeah, I think we're getting a butt R that doesn't exist, right? Is that the problem? Is that the problem that we're having? Let me see, where, let me see where even the problem happens. Yeah, so I think the, the deer is a nil. And so the butt R is, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So let me, let me before, we, so let me just like gear equals zero. Uh, but I do want to do like a debug on this one. I want to know what, I want to know what this is. I want you to show me. Uh, look like this. What? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Deer cannot be one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. It's it's like fourteen. No, wait. Is it zero? Wait, wait, wait. How? How? how what? What? Is, what is happening? Two, three, seven, eight. It returns zero. Huh. Wait, I'm doing one plus and so it returns minus one? Let me just print BTN. Let me just print BTN. It's 15. But if I do it like this, oh, it's, it's still 15. That's good to know. But one plus is suddenly zero. One plus 15 is zero? Oh, I think I know the problem. I think the, um, the plus happens before the end statement. The end statement is executed after the plus. So we're first adding and then we're doing the end. Uh, 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 uh. So we have to do it like this. I hate that we need to do it like this. Let's try this. Now it doesn't crash anymore. Okay, one last thing I, I wrote down, but this one is actually in the um, schedule editor. So let's go to the schedule editor. All right, so we're in a schedule editor and there's something I, I really need to make sure. And that is, um, so we have this, right? We can move things, right? And we added this thing where we can move it in a different to the different scroll value but the thing is we can move it to negative scroll values which is not cool and the other thing that we can also do is we can move it to a scroll value that is before uh, like b before now so how does that even work like it's negative now right because it's supposed to spawn there right but it's not, like it's spawning negative, like it's spawning before it's supposed to spawn. It's, it's weird. So we wanna make sure that, um, that you know, those edge cases are kind of like taken care of. And I wanna do it now because later on maybe I will forget. So the update function is um, update move. Where is update move? There we go. So this is good, this is good. This is now where we're changing the schedule. So first of all, um, if, I'm gonna do like a stupid if statement. If cells cat uh, equals zero, uh, smaller than zero, uh, then cells cat is equal zero. Uh, so this makes sure that we cannot spawn enemies at a negative value. I think that makes sense. Uh, or like a spawn enemies before the game begins, right? Uh, and then this one is more tricky. So we want to make sure that we cannot spawn enemies after the current scroll value. So kind of like after. 
the moment that we're looking at right now, because then the then enemies wouldn't technically exist at the time when we're looking at them. So that makes no sense, right? Uh, it's kind of weird that the enemy doesn't disappear. It, they should not be visible because the time we're looking at right now in this in the editor is a time before the enemy appeared. It's we are making kind of like like Tenet here. <laughs> Like the movie Tenet, right? We're kind of like going through time backwards and forwards. It's like, uh, it's like time travel. So um, we're going to do something. We're going to actually move the, the scroll. So we're going to go if um, cell sked one is smaller than scroll, then, then scroll equals cell skit something like this mm -hmm. let's try that uh... oh single equals okay so let's try this again so we have this oh, see it's, it's it's kind of weird that did we save this or something okay okay so we cannot scroll it past zero Scrolling it up is a bit weird. I think uh, we, we did, did the math wrong. Let me think about this because again, it's kind of confusing. So we make it smaller and no, no, here we make it bigger. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, we should make it like this. So like this, let's try this again. Um, it's weird that this is the spawning location. It, 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 I, it's not what I expected. I'm not sure why why that is. We have to, well, I guess, right. So now the now the enemy is moving with us because we are moving it further down the line. And we want to make sure that yeah, we cannot make it scroll past zero. Yeah, uh, it's just like the placement is not quite what I expected. I'm I'm a bit confused. Now this works, but now, like, see the location is weird. The location is not what I expect. <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of my own. Yeah, it's weird that it's already on the screen. It should spawn at 10, right? So it's weird that it's already there. I think we're drawing things before they spawn. That's a problem. Uh, so let me see. We're discovering uh, more bugs, but while we are fixing other bugs, so let me let me sh let me see where where this is happening. Gen ends here is here is where we go. Right, so we shouldn't draw an enemy that is hasn't spawned right now. So we're gonna go if um, sure one. I think that's a spawning time is greater. Uh, smaller equals um, scroll. Then and only then we shall actually add that enemy. Let's try that. Right, so now you don't see that enemy anymore because it spawns at, at scroll number 10. So we don't see that enemy, don't see the enemy. Now it appears, and it appears exactly at that spawn location. And now we would see the problem that we had, like if we now had moved it, and now we moved it to, because now we're looking at, at scroll value 10, at 10 seconds into the flight, so to speak. And if we had moved that enemy 11 at the spawning location, the spawning time at 11 seconds, but we're looking at second number 10, that I mean, enemy at this point should not exist. And so that enemy would like poof out of existence technically, because we moved it in the, into the future. So whenever we may move an enemy into the future, we want to also advance into the future with the enemy. I think that makes sense with, uh, for me. Okay. <laughs> just your regular time travel stuff. Just go watch Oppenheimer and you will understand how this works. Okay, so um, Skedit is saved. Let's now move on to Brain Edit. Let's move on to the thing that we actually, we actually wanted to do, but um, before we do, because I know I will have to set up a meta thing, right? Uh, let me look it up how meta looked like in Sprite did. So we have like this file M, this, we have to create another uh, file, um, this file M, 
and that will save. Um, that's where we're saving our meta stuff, right? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, and then, uh, the, but the thing I really want to see is this here. This is where we're exporting the meta. So let me just grab this. Let me just grab this. And let me just copy this. And then we're gonna go load brain edit. And then here, I, oh, there we go. And here we are going to write the meta file into, uh, into the, and we're gonna take a look at it later because right now it's probably broken. But yeah, just like to, to uh, iterate what our job today is. Our job today is we want to uh, make the setup button work. We wanna press it, we want the menu to appear and in this setup uh, menu, we want to be able to set up some meta information about you know, how the preview of a brain works. This is not an enemy that we're looking at. It looks like an enemy, but it's not actually an enemy. The enemies we're doing in the enemy editor, right? This is just a behavior. Just like a behavior, a way of moving a sprite around the screen. Now, um, right now it's always like this sprite, but sometimes, you know, we wanna maybe have a preview of what the actual enemy will look like. So we wanna maybe change the sprite. And we want to maybe sometimes change the location at which the sprite is spawning. Because right now it's spawning in the middle of the screen. But maybe I want to see, you know, what it looks like when an enemy flies in from the top. And so I maybe want to spawn it off screen. Or maybe I want to sp spawn to the right because it's one of the enemies that flies from, in from the side. So, yeah, we want to specify for each brain some parameters about the preview in this program. And that's metadata because it's, it's data that it's not, not gonna be useful for the actual game. It's just gonna be useful for this one specific editor. Um, so yeah, I want to save um, the sprite or specifically the sprite animation, uh, the, the animation speed as well, and the, the, and the spawn equation X and Y. So four parameters need, need to go into the meta table. Right, um, how many brains do we have right now? My bra? My bra doesn't exist. I think we only have two brains, right? And so when I go to the third brain, it, it's, it's, it's a bit confused. Let me see. Ah, yeah, we do it here. This is, this is update brain. Yeah, got, got it, got it, no problem. So we just wanna make sure that the do enemies thing is only called if you're watching a brain that actually exists. So we're gonna go if, data um, mm, 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 cell brain then yeah that's good that's what we want maybe maybe we should we should get this one out as well Maybe this should be like this, and then else enemies equals like this. So we're gonna not gonna show anything uh, when we when we have a new brain at our hands. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is good. Uh, we just introduced the enemy, and we haven't considered that we might select a brain that's uh, and like in this new brain function here. Okay, but now let us return to the meta table. So let us set up the file m thing. So we are here in IO, we are um, writing things into the file n. So I want to now uh, set up the file n as a, as a variable. And I think it's just like brains meta. Let's just call it brains meta. Um, now what is actually happening when we're actually printing this? Uh, I mean, we're just going through, the, through this meta table, right? It's just like nothing special here. So let's just set up a meta table right now and then we'll just make it safe. So we're gonna met meta uh, and then like this. And we have two brains. So this is not gonna be very complicated. Brain number one, brain two. Uh, and we can just save all of the stuff in those two brains. Um, so first of all, um, the animation that we want to show. Um, what is currently, oof, I need to look this up. What are, what are some good animations? <laughs> Yeah, so the first animation I think is five, that's the UFO, I think. And um, the animation speed is six. And let's put it at um, 64, zero at the top of the screen, right? 
Um, and then the second animation, we're going to just, just to make it see something else, we're going to go 7.1. That's going to be, the, I think, the big uh, UFO um, and, and animation speed one. And we're going to put it uh, smack in the middle of the screen. Um, and that should get us like two different behaviors for our different uh, enemies. So we're going to save this and we're going to run. We're going to export. Okay, that worked. Uh, but now we want to, to feed this metadata into our actual preview. Um, so when we're spawning the enemies, where is it? This here, spawn n, right? Mm, this is what kind of enemy we're spawning. Ah, I just realized. You see, oh, let's make it let's make it easier then. Let's make it easier. Let's make it just so we're not we're just spawning a certain type of enemy. Uh, this makes everything a little bit simpler because now meta table is. Um, um, we don't have to save two numbers for the sprite and animation speed, or like the animation and animation speed. We just have to save one number that is kind of like the the enemy uh, library. And so one is the UFO, two is the big chunky UFO, and that's going to be it. Um, and we're going to use the spawn and function to get all of the animation data. I think that's that makes more sense for the way that we, we set this up. Yeah, yeah, okay. But we still need the spawn and location. Uh, right, so we're going to dump this in here, meta1, meta2, meta3, like this. Let's try this. Nil value. Do we do, don't we have a meta? Did we did, did something wrong? Oh, right, mm, of course. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, a meta uh, cell brain, obviously. Well, let's actually get something like local cell meta equals meta cell brain, and then cell meta. Uh, instead of meta, we're gonna do cell meta because it's like a two-dimensional array. I d I forgot it. What was what was a two-dimensional array? I I did a goof. I goofed up. Okay. Okay, so now you see now the enemy is spawning at the top, and now if we have the second enemy, now that that is a different uh, the second brain associated with a different enemy, so we're using that enemy now for this second brain. We also here have to keep in mind now that whenever we create a new brain, we also have to create a corresponding enemy first, and then we have to create the brain. But otherwise, we are good. Okay, so now when this works, uh, there's let me do a small to-do list so I don't forget things. Meta brain data. Um, we want to have a UI. UI. We want to uh, create data and um, meta on brain create and also delete. Delete meta on brain delete. Just, remember, just make sure that whenever we create new brains or delete old brains, that the meta follows suit, right? Uh, and then we also have to include the methods. That's something that we haven't done yet. So we're going to include um, my brains meta like this. And this means, wait, wait, wait. Let me let me quote this out real quick. Uh, let me save this, export, and then we can include this and we can remove this. Oh, I haven't defined file n. <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. Let's try this now. And then we're going to include the meta and we can comment this out. Yeah, okay, 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 <laughs> it's, it's working now. Uh, oops, swoopsie doopsie. Let me just like speed run, speed run through the setup menu. Um, right, so we have to do a new draw function, I think. Do we have to do a new draw function? We can just draw, keep drawing the brain, right? There is nothing special about this. So we can keep drawing the brain, but we do have, need a, a new refresh function, definitely. So UI refresh. We're going to call this refresh setup. And we do not want to have an up different update function. So we're going to function update setup. Setup. 
And in this function, we're going to do a refresh setup. Um, <clears throat> we are going to go, yeah, yeah, we're going to, we're going to go with this for sure. Um, and you know what, uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, let us now create um, the actual menu, the actual UI for this. So we're going to go menu equals nothing. Let us add, let's copy this one. Let us add uh, to the menu this. This is just going to be uh, the brain. Let's, let's, I want to, at the top, I want, I want to print. I want to print, actually, let's, let's print this. I want to print the actual name of the brain. I think that's a good idea. Like this, brain, cell brain. <clears throat> there is not going to be any command in here, just like, I just want to print, I just want to print the, the brain on, on top. Um, then I'm going to add, I'm just going to print the metadata, just like the raw metadata. Do we just print the raw metadata? Yeah, let's print the raw metadata in here. So we're going to go uh, 4i equals 1, 2, 3, do. Uh, and we're going to create our, our helper variable local cell meta equals meta cell brain. Um, and then we're going to go add menu. And it's going to be cell meta i. Um, the X positions will stay at, at three. I is going to be three plus uh, I multiplied by eight. Let's try eight. And just we should um, draw uh, the raw metadata. I just want to make sure that we can switch to that. That's I won't actually see that. <laughs> that new setup here. So um, yeah, here's the setup thing, right? So we're gonna go UPD equals uh, update setup. And then we're gonna force the refresh setup and then return. And then, yeah, let's just, I mean, it's gonna be a one way ticket right now, but, but let's try this. So we're in a setup, and there we go. Um, I do not like, I do not like some of the layout here. I do not like, for example, yeah, this W thing here, that's not cool. Um, I mean, we just need three, three in total. Um, yeah, let's try that. Yeah, see, so now that our goal, hmm. so we need to kind of get rid of one, two, one, two. Let me let me beautify this a little bit so so because it's just like raw numbers and I kind of want to see what the raw numbers mean. So let's do a little um, <clears throat> local uh, cap. It's like captions for the different things. Uh, so it's going to be enemy uh, x. Why is that? Is that is that how it works? I mean, we can just abbreviate it N. It's fine. We we understand what N means, X and Y. Um, right, and then um, I want to draw the caption square brackets I. Uh, uh, it should be two, and the command is going to be nothing uh, x is three so this needs to be a bit now higher so let's go eight let's try that and just gonna uh, it's gonna be even higher 10 yeah that's good um yeah 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 maybe maybe colon maybe colon let's go let's go colon Uh, but now this needs to be higher for 
Uh, maybe smaller, 12. Maybe less spacing between them. Maybe less spacing. Maybe maybe six is okay as spacing. Yeah, but also plus two. Plus two, because I don't want the caption to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. See, it's, it's a nice little... Um, I don't want... Because now, right now I'm adding every, um, I'm adding every element as a... Uh, as a as a separate array, so that's why when I press up and down, it jumps left and right. Uh, I, I screwed up that thing. Like if, if you see here, if I press up, I'm pressing up and down, and it jumps sideways, and that's because every button is in its own array. So what we want to do is um, local lne equals. We're gonna create an array, and that's where we're gonna dump all of the buttons into, and then we're gonna dump that into the menu. or at least all the buttons of one line, we're gonna dump into one array, and then we're gonna go add menu LNE, like this. Yeah. Okay, um, let's fix the update function of that, because there are some things that we don't want to do. First of all, um, I want the curve Y to be at least two. because I don't want to be able to go back into up in the brain two uh, line. And then cur x is always also going to be two because we always just want to uh, be um, going through data. Like this, that's good. Um, now I just want to, when I press enter here, I want to be able to change that, right? But first of all, maybe before we do that, um, yeah, uh, this is going to be uh, definitely the, the button to press here. Um, that's going to be like interacting with the buttons, um, but uh, I also want to exit out of this as well. So if we press O, then end, um, then we're going to set UPD to uh, update brain. Like this. And actually, I think we should, we should do the enemies. We should do the enemies here. update brain and also refresh brain, right? Yes. So this will return us to the regular editing mode. This will animate, the, keep animating the enemies underneath. So like when you're doing the setup, you can actually see where the enemies is and so forth. I think that's important. Okay, so let us do the editing. I think in the UI, um, meta, wing to here, this is the actual thing that we're editing, CMD and C, uh, CMD Y equals, and we're gonna set that to I. Right, so um, these are. this is kind of like the commands that we're issuing here, that we're editing the metadata. And when we're editing the metadata, this is now where we start typing in stuff. This is gonna be all typing. I think that's okay. Um, we have the capability, so why not, right? So we're gonna use this. This is the code required to start the typing mode, basically. Uh, we're gonna set the UPD to UPD type. Um, do we have a mine menu? Yeah, well, let's get the mine menu. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go if, just, just in case, we're gonna go if my menu dot cmd equals meta, then <clears throat> so yes, we're doing this, we're doing this, uh, type cur. Uh, yes, callback enter meta. Uh, and then here in enter meta, let's enter brain, let's get enter brain out and let's put it underneath, enter meta. So first of all, we want to return to, in, to update meta. Um, then my menu, okay, we're gonna get the menu, that's okay. Uh, type file equals this. We're gonna reset the enemies. That's okay. Yeah, this is um, this stuff is all weird. Actually, it's gonna be a little bit more like like this, where we go enter table, right? This, this is this is more more the way this will work. So let's let's get 
let's get this out yeah because this is this is weird stuff this is weird stuff we're not going to, going to delete anything ever yeah yeah this all this weird all this weird just replace it with this this is a much simpler version so if type file to to num type text if type file equals nil so we haven't typed in a number then type val equals zero and then we're going to go meta square brackets um, my menu cmd y and then oh man i've always forgot cur, cur brain is that cur brain cell brain right so this is now where we're adding the meta we are take, taking the current Currently selected brain, we're using the uh, number of the meta entry that we're editing, that we take that from the from the actual button that we're typing in. Um, and we got assign uh, type val to it. And that is it. I mean, yeah, all of this stuff is not necessary. All of this stuff is not necessary. It's, it's like a very simple solution. Yeah, we're changing, changing, just changing it to a number, making sure that it's um, there's one one small problem. We could cause a situation where uh, we are spawning an enemy that doesn't exist. We have to we have to catch that that problem. But otherwise, we should be good. So, for example, now we should go to 128. Oh, it's not meta update setup. I, I said it. I called it update setup. I maybe should have called it update meta. Oh, whatever. Right, yeah, let's see, it's, it's spawning in a different location. It's good. And now it's spawning there. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that, and now I can just kind of spawn it there. Oh, <laughs> and now we can turn it to a different enemy. Oh, and now we can, oh, oh. I anticipated this, yes. Um, so the problem is that now when we're spawning enemies, we want to make sure that we're spawning enemies that exist. Yeah, do, let's do something like, uh, or maybe you should do it. No, we shouldn't do it in meta. We should do it already here. So it's like uh, local n equals nlib cell meta. Uh, I'm going to go if nlib cell meta equals, n uh, no, doesn't equals nil, then. Right? So we're spawning the enemies only if the meta is pointing to a number that is an actual enemy. So it's like, if we set it to two, it's okay. If we set it to three, oh, because we're in a brain function update. Yeah, 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 okay. We need to do the same thing. We need to, s we need to do the same thing here. Maybe this should be a function, but but whatever. Yeah. So if I set it to zero, just no enemy appears because we set it to something that doesn't exist. Now if I set it to three, doesn't exist. Two does exist. Um, maybe it should be nice to have like an error message there, but uh, for now this works, so I'm happy about that. Um, let me see if this the changes that we're doing if they're actually uh, if they actually work. So if we set it this to let's 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 set it to eighty. So it's all the way down here, and then this brain we're gonna set to let's set it to zero, zero something like this, right? And then we're gonna export and we're gonna rerun this. This worked. I'm not sure. Yeah, this worked as well. It was 80, right? As we said to 80, yeah, that worked. Okay, good. So now we have a metadata kind of stuff. So that's good. That's good. This has been a very, very long episode now. So let's move on to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the doggy zone. So really, I mean, we are working our way through this brain editor. We have created now this meta edit editor kind of stuff. So really the next step uh, is we want to start developing the brain commands. So what I want to do is I want to create a list of the kind of behavior that I want to replicate in my game. 
And then we're gonna try to code this in our brain editor. And if there's something that we can't do with our brain system right now, we're gonna expand the brain system to make it work. So what I want you to do, I want, so I want you to create like, I don't know, six enemy behaviors that you wanna see in your system. And then you are gonna go through the different behaviors of different, wildly different enemies. And we're gonna to try to make them work in our brain system. And you can already start it yourself. You can go start going through the different enemies that you came up with or the different enemy behaviors and try to implement them and, and take note of what kind of abilities are you missing to replicate this behavior. That is the doggy zone. Right, right, right. And at the end of each episode, I also say a big thank you and a huge shout out to the beautiful people out there on coffee.com who are supporting the show, who are making the show possible. Thank you so much for your support. This means a lot to me. Also on this episode, huge shout out. We do another roundup of new subscribers. So as of 7th of August, which is actually the 8th of August is where I'm recording this, but I did the list on the 7th of August. We have the following new subscribers. We have um, Windigo, we have Aaron Nagaraj, and we have Dark Soul, we have Xtol12, we have Secret Donation Man, and Elizabeth Rowe. Welcome and thank you so much for your support. And also, as always, I want to do a... I want to read a comment. This one is a lengthy comment, so I will cover my face with this comment because I, I want to kind of read, read through this. This has been uh, posted by Kai Dubrin on episode 39. In keeping with the lazy devs theme, instead of using metadata for the collision sprites, you could instead use bogus values that wouldn't make sense to don denote which sprite um, should be on the display in the collision box. More specifically, note that the X and Y positions go unused for colli coll Collider sprites. Uh, what you could do is to make the negative x value to make a negative x value show which sprite box this belongs to. Um, if you really want to get if you want to get really lazy, you could make the names for the sprite be defined in a table listed at the top of the code base. Like um, yeah, and then you could like you know just write the names at the, at the top. Sure, you have to break into the code anytime you want to add a new name, but is that really that bad? Especially when you realize that nobody else uh, else will probably use this editor and the code editor works just fine as a text editor and you just saved yourself from writing a bunch of code to save metadata. It sounds worth it to me at least. Um, yeah, these are some good ideas. I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, these are good ideas. These, these are very pragmatic solutions and I like that. I like that, that um, you know, that, that somebody's like, like do, do we have to go through this metadata kind of stuff? We can just save ourselves the metadata and don't have to have this, this extra file that we edit and just put all of the stuff directly into the editor. That's okay. Maybe, I don't know. Um, also, I like this idea that um, and to, to, to kind of like stash away the metadata somewhere and use spaces. This is kind of like the problem that we have with the collision box that X and Y are not used. Uh, that's cool use for them. There's two concerns I have with this. One is that, um, first of all, like the names, storing the names in the actual editor is something I'm worried about because uh, you get inevitably in a situation where you are editing some sprites and maybe making some changes and then you have to export and then you have to get into the code editor and then make the adjust the names in the code editor and maybe when the list gets very long you might not be like really aware which number was what then you have to launch the editor again and see what like i feel like this might be a bit confusing uh, if you have to switch between code editor and actually running the tool in order to make the names and the different sprites sync up. So I'd rather keep everything in the in the actual tool. That feels better to me. Um, it's it's not it's not undoable, but I'm just worried this will be a bit of a messy situation. As for why I didn't uh, stash away uh, stuff in X and Y values, um, generally the metadata is again something that is actually only useful for the editor, and those this data should never make it into the actual game. That's something I want to avoid. Um, now, it's true that the X and Y are not used, so we can use them because they make it into the game anyway, right? But, huh, there, see, for all of the collision boxes, X and Y will always be zero and zero. And if we start putting different values in there, then this stuff will add up to the size of our actual game program. It's not a big deal, but a little bit. Because it's like if it's always zero, zero, like if every collision box is always zero, zero, then that will actually compress very well because the code is compressed at the end, right? Um, so it's always zero, zero, that will actually you know, collapse very well. But it's if every collision box 
has some kind of like numbers, some weird numbers in there that actually don't contribute to the game at all, then that's just additional payload, initial data to payload that you always have to compress and doesn't compress quite as nicely. And um, and yeah, so that's that's something that, that bothers me. It's technically probably nothing will happen. Probably like the additional payload is not that great that it will push us over the line or anything. I just really want to keep it clean. And there is some additional advantage of having a metadata. You can uh, stash additional information in there. It's kind of nice to have the metadata uh, in place. But to be honest, like if I was doing it myself, not doing it like for the tutorial stuff and it, I, I really want to just like push through this and then make it you know as easy as possible. That These are fine solutions. I, I'm, I'm down with that. Yes, so this was a bit of a mm, longer episode. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I want to just like push through the slog a little bit through you know, the UI stuff uh, and so forth. On the next episode, we're gonna actually start working on the brains. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.